Hello, and welcome to the story of Cow 2803. This cow had one of the most serious ulcers we've ever seen on this channel a couple of months ago, and it was absolutely incredible. And despite a few revisits, she didn't make all that much progress. So now we're back on farm today to see how she's doing. You're watching The Hoof GP. Cool, so this is Cow 2803, as we have already established. And a few months ago, this is how she came into the crush. At first, it didn't look all that serious, but once we got the knife and grinder into action, we soon found this absolutely monstrous sole ulcer. It was literally sticking right out the bottom of her foot and would be touching the ground and causing her, obviously, a huge amount of pain. We did everything we could to trim around the ulcer and not to cut into it at all, so we didn't cause any undue pain but it was a mission and a half. And after this first trim, this is how she was looking. Clearly the ulcer still sticking way down, but the block would hopefully lift her foot up off the air and at least give her some pain relief. When we let her out of the crush, this is how she was walking. Yeah, not fantastic. We actually got her in another couple of times after that. And during our first visit, this is how the ulcer was looking. It had retracted a little bit. The blocks were still in place, but Clearly, she still had a very big problem. We trimmed around it with our knives as carefully as possible and again didn't cut into it, but it was still perdunculated. In other words, hanging by a stalk out of the bottom of this outer claw. Trim number three, she was slightly better, but again, definitely not fixed. This is how she was walking after trim number three and I wasn't ecstatic about it, but we had made some progress. And now we fast forward to today, March and she is back in the race, all ready for us to get her into the crush, to get her foot up into the air, to get it washed off, and to see how it's doing. And finally, as the water removes the manure from the bottom of her foot, we can start to see some real progress. I'm really happy with this. I knew this cow was coming in today because I asked Scott specifically to pull her out so we could check on how she's doing. He said she's walking well, and I've no doubt she is walking well, but she definitely does still have a problem. It just remains to be seen how big that problem is. Right, look at this. As you can see from these previous pictures, this part of her corium was literally hanging down out of her foot. And now if we look at it today, it is definitely not hanging down, but there definitely is still a problem. So as I begin to shave fine layers of hoof horn away from the affected claw, we can clearly see there is still a problem in the usual ulcer site. So that means she's definitely gonna need a block. And while I've got the grinder in my hand, I might as well prepare that inner claw ready to take that block. Luckily, my maestro is ready and waiting and already on the case. So farmers like this, farmers who are willing to represent and represent and represent a cow with a problem are the ones who overcome those problems. This cow has taken an awful long time to get to this stage. And I've no doubt she will take another trim or two to get right well, properly over it. At least I think that. I think that her foot is quite open. I can definitely see some redness. To be honest, I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure I'm not. Just slice off this little bit of glue. Okay, so the object, or rather the order of the day, is restraint. Don't cut into it too much. Be careful. Take away all of these little black pieces of hoof horn. Look, you can actually see it still slightly under run. Usually problems are fixed much more quickly than this one. But perseverance in this case, hopefully, will be fruitful. What a difference though, it really is colossal a difference. Just change over my knife so that I can swipe up the way on this piece. The back of my knife is obviously touching the lesion, but I really don't want the sharp edge of this knife to touch it. Kevin sharpened these this morning, so they are razor-like. Oh, you see that slightly underrun there, look at that. You weren't expecting that, were you? Oh no, I don't say it goes much further. Oh, it's not as healed as I had hoped. And it is clearly still a bit of a mess. 
just being around that problem is uh, aggravating it. I just need to remove these parts here, look. If I get my knife, you can actually see it's not attached. So those parts need to come off. Just take gentle little slithers away from these areas. Look, I'm avoiding it because I know that it's not going to be easy to get rid of that. I'll try this. Hey, that worked. I'm making it look worse, but if I don't remove these parts, it'll get worse. And I don't care about it looking worse. I care about it getting worse. If that makes sense. Okay, sit rep. She is clearly not completely healed, but she is miles better than where she once was. We are on the right road to recovery and we're definitely getting there. But clearly she still has an issue and this block is gonna be massive in preventing her from being sore as she walks and actually promoting the healing of this soul ulcer. But we need to, but we need to, but we need to get the soul ulcer to granulate and form new tissue. But we need to get the soul ulcer to granulate and form new tissue. And that is where this iodine comes in. But I'm also worried that she's maybe slightly got a little bit of dermatitis on the lesion and that has been what's preventing it from completely healing. So we're actually gonna wrap this one as well. We actually have to remove the flap from underneath her foot because we can't wrap it when it's in position. Kevin and Craig are much neeper. Ne neeper? Neeper. Kevin and Craig are much neater at applying these wraps than I am now because they're usually the ones who do it. Actually, it doesn't bother me in the slightest, obviously. It's good to see that they're better than me now at this. This is a biodegradable bandage or wrap, which is why we use them now. They're fantastic. They're kind of paper-like, actually. When they tear, you can see it more. So they break down over a few weeks, which is fantastic because if they're left on the cow a little bit longer, they seem to be working better. But if you leave a bandage on a cow for too long and it's not biodegradable, it'll actually start to cut in and literally cut off the circulation to a cow's foot. That was easy for me to say, wasn't it? Anyway, if you leave a bandage on that is not biodegradable, it can cause real disastrous problems for cow's feet, which is why using these bandages is fantastic. Right, onto that foot. a bit of bruising on this foot and that's obviously because she's using this foot more because the other one has been so affected. Right, let's see how she walks. As you can see here, she is walking massively better than she was during her first visit to Salon Hoof GP. Salon Le Hoof GP, if you're in France. I think. Anyway, you've been watching The Hoof GP and the story of Cow 2803, which is set to continue. And if you'd like to see more about cows like her and the other cows that we feature on this channel, then please think about subscribing or following this page. Bye now! <laughs>